Here are five reasons why not to buy a Samsung phone. So the first one is bloatware. So bloatware are these pre-installed apps that you have in your phone. So Samsung phones have a ton of bloatware and they have created an alternate app to every Google based apps like they have a Google Chrome and a Samsung Internet. Then they have a Google Play Store and a Samsung Galaxy Store, Google Voice Assistant and Bixby and so on. So you can actually manually disable or uninstall these apps, but they do get in your way and they completely ruin your stock Android experience. The second one is plastic bag. This only applies to mid-range and flagship phones that use plastic bag. So plastic has its own advantages and disadvantages like plastics are drop resistant, meanwhile they are more scratchable. But the main problem that I'm facing with plastic bags is that there are small smudges on the gloss coating over the plastic which is happening on its own and is not easily removable and I've seen that in all the plastic phones that I've used this only happens with gloss phones but I don't know if this is the same case in terms of matte finished phones because I have not used one in the long term so this is a thing to consider if you are not using a case on your phone and if you're worried about the beauty of your phone from the back and plastic phones also lack that premium feel that you get with glass phones. You can literally feel the components of your phone if you're pressing the back of the phone hard enough. The third one is also regarding mid-range phones, that is the glass covering the front display. So Samsung mid-rangers use very old Gorilla Glass versions on their mid-range phones as a part of cost cuttings. Take the A71 as an example which was launched in 2020. That phone had the Gorilla Glass 3 which was launched back in 2013 and the Gorilla Glass 3 only had a claimed drop resistance of 0.8 meter that is waist height and there was also a flagship Galaxy Note 20 which was launched in 2020 that also had the Gorilla Glass 5 but the most expensive models made by Samsung does get the latest Gorilla Glass but hey not everyone is gonna buy the most expensive phone the fourth one is unoptimized processors. So as most of you guys know, Samsung mainly uses two chipsets in their smartphones, the Snapdragon version and the Exynos version. So take the S21 series, that phone has the Snapdragon 888 which is sold in US, Canada and South Korea and also has an Exynos 2100 version which is sold globally. So most of you guys are going to end up buying the Exynos version. So Exynos in the past has been really infamous for its lack of performance compared to the Snapdragon. But even if Exynos processors come on par or surpass the Snapdragon processors in terms of performance, they're gonna still lack in optimization. That is, if you're playing a game in a Snapdragon phone, that phone will be able to use the best graphic settings possible. But you may not get that in the Exynos processor, even though the processor is physically capable of doing better. But this only bothers you if you play a lot of game on your phone. The fifth one is the lack of non-removable batteries. So when mainstream manufacturers like Apple, Xiaomi, OnePlus are giving you pull tabs or are using simple adhesives to easily remove batteries. But Samsung on the other hand uses very strong glue and gives no pull tabs which makes battery replacements very dangerous. But you don't have to worry about this if you are replacing your phone every year or two. That being said, these are some of the typical problems faced by Samsung phones. But there are more positive things about this phone which i'll be covering in another video so hope you guys got a new information from this video and if you did do consider subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next video